you're here. How are you doing? I'm just sitting and fooling around on my favorite instrument, the Fender Rhodes Mark 173. It's just so playable, it's so fun to play, and it can be really soft. And it can be pretty nasty and, and aggressive if you want it to be. A bit out of tune there, but that's the thing with these. They are alive. They, they have their own personality. And I was thinking, what is the best instrument, the best keyboard instrument for a session musician? Well, if you want to know what I have and what I use and why I use it, stick around. <laughs> So maybe I've gone a little bit overboard with this, a tiny little bit. Anyway, let me show you around this ridiculous keyboard rig and I will show you when I use what and what I use when. Let's start with my old friends. These are my old friends, and when I say friends, I really mean friends. These have been with me on so many gigs, I can't count them all. My first synthesizer with 88 weighted keys was this Yamaha S90. After a few years, I bought this Yamaha S90 XS. They still sound amazing. They are really good synthesizers, but unfortunately, they are mostly collecting dust. I use the S90 XS from time to time. If I have a double gig, for example, I can leave the S90 XS in one room and have other keyboards in a one, another room, corporate event gig or something like that. But otherwise, I don't use them enough. I'm sorry to say. So this is my main electric pianos. I've got a Nord Stage 2 and my latest edition, to my keyboard rig is this Yamaha CP88. Because I work so much as a piano entertainer, I wanted something with good keyboard action. And this really feels great when I play it. I feel like I have total control over the dynamics and the sound is a bit full, which also is good when I perform with only vocals and piano. The Nord stage isn't bad. It's a really good keyboard. Um, the road sounds are amazing. Even though I have a Rhodes, a, a real Rhodes, as you've seen, this is of than what I use live when I'm performing and want that good road sound and roads feel. Uh, the grand piano. Uh, of course it's good. They are famous for it. For me though, I feel that this lacks a bit in the keyboard feel. I can't really have control over both the soft and the hard. It seems like the Rhodes is telling me when I hit it hard that do you have to? Is that necessary? Whilst on the Yamaha, when I hit it hard, it feels like it says, is that your best shot, really? In spite of that, I like them both in different ways. If I'm in some kind of acoustic environment, if it's a double bass, a saxophone or something, I would choose the Nord Stage because I feel that it blends in with acoustical instruments a little bit better. 
than the Yamaha. But the Yamaha, on the other hand, is fantastic in a rock band with guitars and other things. So yeah, that's my main electric pianos. So let's see how the computer works today. As many others, I also use MainStage. MainStage is Apple's uh, synthesizer rig inside of a computer. Uh, same synthesizers that comes with Logic Pro. It is fantastic, even though I don't use it so much anymore. I don't use it so much because I have to change my computer. This one, I think, is from 2013, and I've had some hiccups, and that makes me scared. Because I have to have gear I can rely on. I don't, don't think that this is totally reliable. I use a Yamaha CP4 stage. It's an electric piano as my main uh, keyboard for the main stage. This one is broken. I have some distortion on the output, so I can't really use the built-in sounds of it. But as a USB keyboard, it's great. Expensive USB keyboard, though. Uh, an M Audio Axiom. Um, also good keyboard and a Roland A A800 Pro. Three different kinds of keys. I have some older stuff also. I don't have an arsenal of vintage keyboards. You won't see any Mini Moogs, Prophet 5, CS80s. But I have a few keyboards that I want to show you. Let's start from the top. The Yamaha DX7S. I don't think it needs an introduction. Yamaha's famous FM synthesizer from 1982 or 83. Uh, very hard to program, but when you get a hang of it, it's fun to program. And it has this unique metallic sound to it, which is really fun. The next keyboard is a little bit odd, I think. Is the Casio VZ1, VZ, 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 the Casio. It's also an FM synthesizer, but not the same way as the DX7. It seems like the Casio have more rounded edges. Uh, also fun synthesizer to play with and uh, have fun with. The next one is famous, the Roland Juno 106 analog synthesizer famous for its sweeping pads basses and the chorus wow the chorus then we have the yamaha ex5 yamaha's flagship synthesizer and the 90s i think it's a bread and butter synthesizer but it has this an synthesis built in uh, which is analog modeling. It doesn't sound analog at all, but it sounds really cool. It sounds really fun. So let's go down to the rack. Let's start from the bottom. There's this Roland the MKS-20. Uh, Roland's piano module from the 80s, uh, which makes you sound instantly like Elton John. <laughs> but I don't use it for that. I use it for the roads, which have nothing to do with the roads. Nothing, no comparison. It's an electric piano sort of sound, which is really cool and fun to play. It has great dynamics and ability to blend in with other instruments in a way I haven't found in anything else. Then we have this EMU E-Synth. It's an EMU sampler, but with built-in synthesizer. And I'll, I also put a hard drive in it an SCSI hard drive which cost me like a small car when I bought it. I don't know what to do with it. It has unique and great filters but I don't use it much anymore. It's too complicated when I have good samplers in my computer. Maybe I'm lazy. Maybe. Uh, then I have a uh, Alessis Quadraverb GT, which actually is a guitar effect, which I think is useless for guitar, but it's fun on keyboards. Before Apple bought Logic, 
there was a company called Imagic that owned Logic, and they made this thing, Un Juniter, Uniter 8, Unit, Unit, Juniter, Uniter 8. It's a MIDI interface with 8 in and 8 out. And it's 8 times 16 MIDI channels. So 8 times 16 is a lot of MIDI channels. They don't make a driver for it in this age, but you can always find some Russian hacker that have made a driver. So I still use it. And then it's a DI, a 4 channel DI, and a line mixer from Fostex, which my synthesizers go through before it hits my computer. That's my vintage gear. What do I use now? So these are my two main keyboards. I have this Yamaha Montage. Uh, which can make so many sounds, uh, have so many possibilities. You can control the sounds with whatever you want. And I've only scratched the surface of what this beast can do. About a year ago, I was the musical director for a musical, a musical with a variety of songs. Uh, and I only had room for two keyboards and I wanted two keyboards that could fill the spectra of all the sounds I needed in the musical. So I chose these two, the Yamaha Montage and the Nord Electro 6D. <laughs> Which is also fantastic. It, it has the same sounds as the Nord Stage 2, sort of, but I feel like it sounds a little bit better. And to have physical drawbars is great if you're playing a uh, Hammond B3 organ style. So this, this is what I use now, mostly. So when I'm working as a piano entertainer, I will go for the Yamaha CP88. That will fill my needs. If I have a jazz gig, I will go red. Nord Stage 2, and maybe also the Electro 6D. If I have a rock or blues gig, I will go for the Yamaha CP88 and the 6D for the B3 sounds. If I play more modern music in a band or behind an artist, I have some options. The montage is always going to be there, I think, and either the 6D or I have a main stage solution as my upper keyboard. I can also combine all three of them if I want to. So that's how I think when I use what and what I use when. So what is the best keyboard for a session musician? Well, I don't know. I'm still searching. What I do know is that if you're about to buy a keyboard, there are a few things you have to consider. First of all, of course, is what kind of gigs do you have? Are you playing in a church, in a rock band, in a dance club, with acoustic instruments, with the electric instruments? That, together with the budget, of course, is aspects you have to consider when buying a keyboard. For me, also, is how much do I want to carry? Do I want to carry all these things around? <laughs> no, I don't think so. That's why I bought the Yamaha Montage, for example, because I can take only that and manage most of my gigs. Do you really want to go with a Hammond B3 and a big Leslie on each performance? The band members are probably going to love you during the performance and hate you when they have to help you carrying it. But if you and the band are fine with that, go with a B3, who wouldn't? Of course. But you have to consider also that you need extra things around the keyboard in your budget. You have to have a good stand, pedals, a good case. Think about that. These things are only my opinions. If you have other suggestions of what the best keyboard for a session musician is, please leave it in the comments. Maybe there's something I haven't checked out, I didn't know about, so please tell me. That's about it, folks, and thank you for watching. And the Swedish word for today is going to be musician. Musician. And that in Swedish will be Musiker. Musiker. And Roger that.